Today, there are many different sources for downloading DEM data online and for free. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to download DEMs for a specific extent, just what you need or just around what you need. And if you stay until the end, I'll leave you with some a super tip on how you can make your DEM layout look much more professional. In this video, we'll cover how you can get an API key from Open Topography and how to download a DEM data for a specific extent and how to make the analysis and make it presentable in a professional manner. So first on our QGIS app, we have, I have just a small um, ship file here to activate your plugin, go to manage and install plugins. You are using the open topography DM downloader plugins, manage and install plugins. Be sure to have your internet connection on so that you follow through with it. On the search tab, type in open topography as one word. Type in open topography as one word. And you see, I already have mine installed. Otherwise you click on install here. So as you can see from the directions here, get an API key from open topography on the um, homepage tab, more info, click on homepage. It opens up on your browser. We see a GitHub link that's giving you the details of the different type of DMs available here. We'll get to that shortly, but on the link below here, that takes you to the website of Open Topography. Click on it. When you are there, click on my Open Topo, the top of the page, if you can see where I am. Then scroll down a bit on the My Account section, you click on Authorization and API Key, my Open Topo Authorization and API Key. If you are not signed in, when you click on my Open Topo, it will open a page for you to um, either create an account or sign in. But mine is already signed in, so I don't have a, a problem. Creating an account is pretty straightforward. So you see request an API key, and you see an API key already displayed here. So back to QGIS. We can now close this. If you don't see yours on the tool tab here, right click on it and under toolbars, you see plugins toolbar. Select that, you see mine has disappeared. Plugins toolbar. So open topography DM downloader. To set your parameters, you can select which of the um, DM types you want to download, which of the satellite images you want to use for your download. I uh, will take the Copernicus DM DSM centimeter. To define the extent, you can use the current map canvas. If you want, if you already have um, coordinates or an area where you want to select, you can determine to draw on canvas, which you now click and click on the different sections of the map to determine how far you want it to be. This doesn't mean you are going to download exactly that portion of DEM, but you your download is going to be closer around it, such that when you're performing your analysis, you have something smaller to work with rather than a whole country's DEM or more than that. So, I'll use map canvas extent. As you can see, it automatically detects the coordinates around here. And my API key is already here. Otherwise, I would have copied it from there and pasted here. Setting the output raster file means that if you do not do this, then it saves to a temporary file, which will be deleted once you close your QGIS. But Let's save it to an original file. 
Clit special data hub. I hope you have subscribed to my channel and if you find this video helpful do well to like it and support the channel so that we could grow together save you see it saves in the directory open output file yes and run it runs successfully you can close it it's still processing Yep, we are here. This is it. So as you can see, it's not just the area of the shape file you downloaded, but it's very much closer. If you are downloading from USGS or any other website, you'll see that you have to download almost a whole states or multiple states and have to clip your data later. But this is what we have here. And now to um, process our DM, let's first project it to ensure that it's projected to the right um, zone. I'll be using the UTM here. Click on raster, go to projections, and then wrap project. Uh, set input layer is set to special data hub, which is what we need. Then source, you can use any of the projected coordinates here. Projected is projection systems here. Coordinate reference systems, rather. And for this resampling method, you can use nearest neighbor or bilinear. Nearest neighbor is best when you are making calculations on it. Let's just set that. Leave the advanced parameters reprojected. Same thing. You can leave it as a temporary file. Let's use that special data hub. Re Project and project save and run. So we are done here. Let's now edit it to make it a lot more readable. We can edit the styling. Let's expand this place here. Edit the styling from single bands, change to heel shades. For the zoomed in, change from nearest neighbor to bilinear. We can, um, let's duplicate this projected area. Let's duplicate it, we'll need it later on. Continue editing on the first. And then, um, let's edit the styling of this back to single band for the color set the color ramp set a color ramp to a new color ramp select cpt city catalog okay it produces a whole number of them Select topography since that's what we want to represent. Elevation and okay. Fine. Then our blending modes. Let's select multiply. Change it to multiply. Then Classify. You can um, edit this. You can change this continuous to equal interval or quartile, depending on what you want. The thing about continuous is that it selects its own um, number of intervals, while equal interval 
now gives a distinct number of intervals which you can now edit the number of classes here for a continuous it uses a default selected so you can't edit the number of classes if that's what you want in your final map so let's just say equal interval change this to seven yes then now here's the big main tip here if you have to use a um, print layout if you have to use a print layout here special data on your print layout let's add a map and a legend so you see what this will look like let's turn off this i'll turn off this so that it doesn't show on the map A print layout now if you add a legend on this map you'll see that it looks first turn off auto updates on your legend items you can turn off you can remove this no not that remove this remove this remove all of that but now you see that what's represented on our map is just two values because it's showing it's not showing the values of the elevations in between the highest and the lowest elevation. To correct that, go to your legend settings. Go to your legend settings. Untick this use continuous legend. Except that is what you actually want. If you require that you just get the highest and the lowest elevation, then absolutely fine. You can stick with that. Then you untick it. It now gives you the whole number of the elevation values for each elevation level, such that on your legend, that's what now appears. You can also see this, that you can edit the, the colors here. You can edit the colors if they are too closely matched with each other. You can edit the colors so that they, they represent something else. They can represent um, a different elevation value. If you are to maybe write in a story map or a, a distribution analysis where you require the elevation values here, you can show that, okay, the elevation value of 110 and above or 115 and above is represented in black you can do that if you want you can also change that okay maybe these two elevation values will have exactly the same elevation if you want to classify it that way and it just depends on what you want so you can play around with this depending on what you want if you want it to show differently too if you want it to um show in a different way from this box checkered way then you can try using the um by sampling the resampling method the bilinear method yeah you get a different result thanks for watching